Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a copy of the newest version of Raw, a classic auction game that'll bring you back to how games used to be designed. This game, this time, is published by 25th Century Games. Okay, now let's get right into this. This version of Raw has the same rules as all the previous versions, but there is new art and components to the game, but the same great game. To bring it back to those who haven't played it yet, the game plays in three rounds in which players will perform actions to obtain auction tiles that may earn them points at the end of each round. On a player's turn, they will choose to do one of three different actions. First, a player can draw a tile from the bag. There is a large variety of tiles and each one that scores can do it differently, while others have special actions. Let's first talk about the god tiles. These can be spent to take a non-god tile currently on the auction track that you really want. This is done on your turn and is done instead of drawing a tile. If you don't use these tiles, they will score you two points per unspent tile at the end of each of the three rounds. Gold tiles will score you three points for each tile at the end of each round. These are civilization tiles. There are five different kinds. If you have three, four, or five different types, they will score you five, 10, or 15 points respectively. A player with no civilization tiles loses five points. This is also scored at the end of each round. This is a flood tile and it will score you one point each, but more importantly, if you have a flood tile, you can score more points with your Nile tiles. Nile tiles will score only if the player also has a flood tile, and if so, will score one point for each Nile tile. If the player has no flood tiles, their Nile tile is worth nothing. Both flood and Nile tiles are scored at the end of each round. These are Pharaoh tiles. The player with the most will score five points, the player with the fewest loses two points, and if all players have the same number of these tiles, no one gains or loses points. These also score at the end of each round. These are the monument tiles and there are eight types. These are also the only tiles that will only score at the end of the third round only. These tiles can score points in two different ways. First, through diversity. If the player has six or fewer types of these tiles, they gain one point for each type. But if they have seven different types, that's 10 points, and eight different tiles is 15 points. Then players gain points for multiplicity. A group of three of the same scores five points, a group of four of the same scores 10 points, and a group of five of the same 15 points. Those are all the tiles that score points, but there are disaster tiles which will do negative effects. All of the disaster tiles will cause the player to discard two tiles with icons that match the icon shown on the disaster tile. If you have less than two, you will discard as many as you can. Drought tiles will also cause you to discard flood tiles before the Nile tiles. These tiles are performed to the player who wins it in an auction. The last tile is the raw tile. These tiles will trigger an auction and will advance the sunboat one space along the raw track. So now you see how many different types of tiles you can draw out of this bag. If you draw out a raw tile, its effects are immediate. If it's another tile, you will place it on the leftmost open space on the auction track. So essentially drawing tiles adds more tiles to the auction or possibly triggers an auction on whatever tiles that are left on the track. Another action which I mentioned was instead of drawing a tile, you can then spend one or more God tiles to take one of the tiles on the auction board there already. Or your third option is to invoke raw. This means that you decide that you want to start the auction of the tiles that are currently on the auction track. I will explain how the auction works as that's a huge part of this game, but there are different ways that the auction can start. First, if the raw tile is drawn from the bag when a player takes the draw tile action, or second, when a player chooses to invoke raw on their turn, choosing that as their action. Either way, when bidding, the player to the left of the player who gets the raw statue starts the bidding and it continues clockwise. When a player bids, they can use one of their sun discs that shows a number representing their bid. Each player starts the game with these and depending on the player count, that determines how many and which numbers each player starts with. After a bid, any subsequent bids must be higher than the previous bid. If a player cannot bid or chooses not to, they can pass. 
Each player can only bid once as the bidding ends when it gets to the player with the raw statue. The winner of the auction, or the player that uses the highest value sun disc, takes all the tiles from the auction track and places them face up on their player board. Each type of tile has a place to place that tile on each player board. If you forget how these score or want to know anything about a tile, this is a good place to look. In addition, the winning player will exchange their sun discs that they used to win the bid with, and they will exchange it with the one on the board. The new disc is then placed face down on their board to use next round, and the one they used to win the bid with is now on the board. So these discs will move around during the game, and one tile starts there at the beginning of the game, but later it keeps being swapped out depending on the winning bid of subsequent auctions. Higher value discs will let you bid higher in subsequent rounds. Now the only thing that you need to know with the auction is when the auction is triggered by drawing a raw tile and all other players pass, the auction tiles and the sun disc will stay in place. When a player invokes raw on their turn, triggering the auction, when the auction track is full, players can all pass and if all do so, all auction tiles on the track are discarded from the game. If a player invokes raw when the track is not full, then all players except the raw player have the option to pass. The raw player must bid if all other players pass. At the end of each round, scoring is then performed with the tiles that are triggered to score. And this is important because after scoring all tiles on the right side of each player's board, they are discarded. Only tiles on the left side will stay round to round, and the round ends when the sunboat makes it to the rightmost space on the raw track that contains the epic marker, or when all sun discs of each player have been played and are all face down. A new round will reset the sunboat, and players will flip over their sun discs to use to bid again for the next round. The epic counter is flipped over to its second side for the second round and it's discarded after the second round to reveal the third round. After three rounds and counting up points for the last round, including monument tiles, the player with the most points wins the game. So now you know how it plays and maybe this was a review for you and you forgot how fun this to the point bidding game is. Or maybe this is the first time you've heard about the game, which is fine. The auction mechanic is what makes this game so good. You use your discs, but you lose the number to gain another. Getting tiles to score the most points is very important, but when not paying attention to what disc you are trading for, you will end up not getting the tiles that you want in later rounds. So players need to pay attention to both uh, of the aspects in the game, what they're using the bid with and what they're gonna receive. The game is really straightforward, so you know exactly what you're gonna do and how to do it. Players can always look at what all other players have as far as tiles or sun discs, so that can add into a lot of strategy as well. The components are really nice. I really like the player board as it tells everything you need to know and separates the tiles from the ones that you will be discarding after you score them at the end of a round versus the tiles that will stay from round to round, scoring more and more points over and over again or the monuments that score one time at the end of the game. And the sun discs are nice and big and wooden. It makes the bidding aspect feel so much nicer. And the raw marker is super duper thick. Not sure if I've ever seen a component this thick, but that's awesome. And I really like the look, the box art gives you a good vibe, and the art on the bag and the player boards continues that feel throughout the game. If you need a strategic bidding game, then you really need to check out this updated game. 25th Century Games has a great track record with their games, and it's continuing to grow to bring more and more games for us and play. Some are like raw that are updated, while others are brand new, and I really appreciate what they're doing uh, to bring us an updated raw with art from Ian O'Toole and a classic game from Reiner Knizia. It's a no-brainer. So control Egypt trying to become an Egyptian king with your family and friends in Raw by 25th Century Games. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.